Howdy and welcome. I'm Mike of Board Games for One, and this is the Board Game Nexus. Do you enjoy throwing water balloons at other people? Do you like building boxes into forts? Are you slightly less mature than you should be and totally cool with it? If so, which I am, um, this game's cool. It's called Fortify. It's coming to Kickstarter. It's a two-player game. So, let's just address this up front. My channel's Board Games for One. Why am I showing a two-player game? Well, one, just calm down. Everything's going to be cool. Um, I have made a solo mode for it. So, if you would like to play that, just hop over to my channel. I've got a how to play this solo. No problem. But, I do want you to know, this is not a solo game. It's a two-player game. Solo mode's fun. But it's a two-player game, but as a solo player, as I feature on my channel plenty of times, every now and then I'll do a video of my party game shelf, um, or some party games I've played, or some two-player games, as I have one or two close buddies, and when they come over, I love to just pour a little glass of whiskey and have a fun two-player game. So, that's where we are. But I made a solo mode for you. Don't worry about it. Want to find out what this is? Let's go straight to the primer. Fortify is a real-time two-player strategy game you can learn in about five minutes. It's a hot summer day with nothing to do. You spot a water hose, a pile of boxes, and a giant bag of balloons. Call your friends, start stacking boxes, and filling water balloons because it's time to fortify. Quickly stack up boxes around your fort. The larger you make it, the more friends can fit inside. The more friends you have, the more water balloons you can toss. Roll well and land your water balloons on boxes, rival friends, and ultimately their base to claim the day. Be the first player to land three hits on your opponent's base. Enclose sections of your fort to grow your team and slow your opponent by throwing dice to knock down their fort cards and kid tiles, all while protecting your own base at the same time. Alright, so let's start by taking a closer look at the components. Let's go overhead. This is what a game in play might look like. We've got your player board with your two bases. So again, two players, you've each got your base and your buckets. You lose if three of these get placed on your base. So you're trying to protect your base, and if a wild gets put on your base and you don't defend it, then you take a splash. We won't go into the how to plays of it, but here we go. You've also got these cool little tokens, and it should be noted, this is a prototype, so any of these features may be changed in the final copy, but it's a, it's a pretty darn good prototype, so I'm comfortable showing it. All right, you've got a cousin token, which gives an extra dice to the player who wins it, and then, of course, you've got the jerk token. You've always got that jerk kid, and they have their own dice. How do you win them? Well, that goes to a fun part of the game that we're going to go to in a minute. The rest of the components, each player gets up to four of their own dice. You've got the black dice there. You've got the white dice over here. You can see they have umbrellas and balloons of different colors. And again, these are prototypes as well as a wild on each of those dice. You've also got your splash tokens right here. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Then we have our cards. These are our fort cards. These are what you use to build your fort. You draw it, and then you have to place it somewhere. All paths have to connect in some way. I can't just go like, what's, let's do something crazy. I can't really, I mean, I could do that, I guess. It wouldn't make any sense, though. It's just going to cause trouble. So your goal is to create a wall of boxes. These are boxes. You are creating a fort. So you can see here, I've got a nice colored fort there. They've got a nice fort. So what are the colors all about? And what's the quality of the cards? The cards are fine. Again, this is a prototype. So I don't want to go too crazy with that. But for a prototype, I'm comfortable with it. It's fine. Board, you can see its thickness right there. Boom. Easy. Folds in half. No problem. All right. So the different colors. What does it mean? Well, when you roll your balloon dice, I'm throwing water balloons. Boom. All right. So I've got an umbrella, which means I can defend against an opponent throwing balloons. So let's just say I put it on my base to be safe. I can place a red balloon on red boxes. I can place a blue balloon on blue boxes or a blue box kit or a blue balloon thrower. Can't put it on a red one. Does no good. Here's the cool thing. If I have, if I'm like, I don't like any of what I've done. Well, I, as long as I place one die, I can re-roll whatever's left. There we go. I'll put a wild on their base. Why not? And then I got a blue balloon. I'll put it right there. So that's what the different colors are for. 
Now we've got our Balloon Kid cards. These are cards that you earn if you enclose a fort like this, which means you have a protected wall connecting all the way around, then you can put either your Balloon Kids or your Box Kids. Box Kids give you more dice. Uh, I'm sorry, Box Kids give you more fort cards for building. Balloon Kids give you more balloon dice. You can have a maximum of four. You start out the game with one. So if I got this kid, well great, now I get two. As far as box kids, normally you would draw four fort cards at the fort building phase. If you have a box kid, you can draw an extra card. You can draw a maximum of six cards. If somebody throws a water balloon at one of your walls and you don't defend against it by placing an umbrella, that piece is destroyed. Boom, it's gone. And now it's no longer enclosed. So these kids stay, but they're not protected. So you don't get to use their benefits. Also, if there are any other walls that were the same color, so let's say that was yellow and this was a yellow, then that got destroyed and so do any yellow touching it. So you can see, you can really wreck somebody's fort if you want to. You can also wreck their balloon throwers. Just place that red die, they flip them over, boom. Let's go back to the front camera. I'm going to tell you something cool. So I got to catch up with the designer and with the publishers of Fortify. They also do Moonshine Empire, which should be coming. So looking forward to that. So they sent me this review copy. Um, but anyway, there's another feature that they might be adding another card and that would be the towel kid. And again, I, it's not for absolute certain, but by the time it Kickstarter, we'll see if it's there. But the Towel Kid is like a medic. So the Towel Kid, if you have one, runs around and you can pick someone for that Towel Kid to dry off so that you can flip the card back over and use your balloon thrower. Otherwise, as it is, once they're gone, that space is used. You can't get rid of them, but you also can't use them, uh, which is fine. But I love the idea of the Towel Kid. It's kind of hilarious. So we'll see if that gets added in. Then comes the funnest part, of course, the tokens, because you know what? This is a real-time game. So, let's say you're playing the fort building phase. You put the cousin token right here, and both of you have your however many fort cards. Let's say I've got five, and they've got four. Well, it's a race. What you have to do is you put this down, you flip the card over, and you either have to place it, or you have to put it at the bottom of the deck. Once you place it, you cannot move it. Whoever places all of their fort cards first grabs the cousin token as fast as they can. Whoever gets the cousin token gets an extra dice during the balloon phase, all right? So that's an extra water balloon to throw. So that is one of the fun parts of the game. When I was playing with my buddy, it was great because you're racing so fast and you go for that token. And if you both go for the same time, that's where it gets really interesting and you take it to the floor. Hopefully, you don't get that far, but actually it's kind of fun. Hopefully you do. But anyway, it's a scramble, which leads to something, I'm not necessarily doing pros and cons in order. Um, something of a con is just that as they are cards and you are building this fort, since you are racing and reaching so very passionately in order to get that cousin die, um, every now and then you might knock your cards off. It wasn't a big problem actually. They were close enough that we could slide them back in place and you may not get that animated. That's totally fine. That was just me, just something to note. Then there's the jerk token. What happens with the jerk? Now the jerk token is powerful. So during the balloon throwing phase, you rolled all your balloon dice. Whoever places all their dice first gets to reach for the jerk token, okay? So, you can take your time and be careful about placing, and keep in mind, you're reaching over each other. It's kind of fun, so you're, you know, you're here and here. This is a, this is a bonding experience. If you're not looking for that, this would not be for you, okay? Because um, you're very close, you're very interactive. But, with the jerk token, if you place all of your balloons, then you can reach for it. And then, if you get the jerk token, that means at the end of the water balloon phase, you get to roll a dice and resolve it. So you get one extra roll. You get the last say if you get the jerk token, and there's a lot of power to that. So you're kind of balancing the strategy of how much time do I spend looking for the most optimal place, and, or do I just race so I get that die? So you could do that. You could be like, all right, I've got two wilds, 
and two reds and I've got like three seconds because the other dude's racing. So I'm going to be like wild, wild, red, red, whatever. It may not have been the smartest and you're going to run for that jerk token. Now, a downside is, let's say that you have, um, it can happen that you have a, even though you can never draw more than six fort cards, sometimes fort cards carry over depending how you play. So you could have in your hand quite a few fort cards. The other person could have only their four to place. So you could just start out, and this happened a couple times in my play with my buddy, that it was like, all right, look, you know what? There's no way I'm going to place all these four cards before you, so I'm going to take my time and strategize. That's absolutely a fair strategy. It's not as fun. It really isn't as fun. This game definitely encourages strategy, but the rambunctious nature of it is what's really fun. It's a water balloon fight with boxes for forts. Come on. So... I think if I was playing it with someone again, I would encourage them to, you know, race. No matter what, still still really try to race through it. So that's, again, that's a personal, um, the only downside with that is if you, you can feel kind of deflated if you have too many fork cards. So, of course, then you want to strategize so you don't necessarily have too many fork cards and you get too many fork cards by getting your fort destroyed. So you want to try to avoid that. So... There's a, I don't know if that's a criticism or not, but um, definitely I preferred when you're both racing than one of you racing and the other one strategizing. Back with the components. Oh my goodness. Go overhead. So the balloon, or I guess box kids. So the box kid tiles are more like tiles. So they're a thicker stock. Same with the balloon kid tiles. They are a thicker stock. And then the forts are cards. So they are a decent stock as well. No issues with any of it. Art. You can see exactly what the art is. Nice, vibrant colors, pictures of kids and all that. I almost think it would be funny if these were full-grown adults in the pictures, <laughs> but that's an art preference. Um, the kids, it gets the whole kid at heart thing, so no issues there. But you might be wondering if there are colors, but there aren't symbols on the colors. And so I had a question about colorblind because my brother is colorblind and I would enjoy playing this with him. He's very competitive, um, so this would be a fun kind of game. But if he's colorblind, I'm like, he can't play it because there's no symbols. So I asked the designer and he actually taught me something I did not know. And that is that there is a grayscale um, for colorblind that checks the colors so that they show in different enough shades that if you're colorblind you can still differentiate on stuff. However, the green and the red were still too close and he said they're adding symbols anyway. So totally fine, problem solved. But I was glad to learn that. I did not know it. I thought you had to have symbols but um, apparently you can make it playable even without it. But symbols will be added so no problems there. Instruction booklet is still a work in progress. I was able to learn the game just fine. I did have some suggestions um, for them on kind of condensing things, maybe making a quick start guide. And uh, Caleb was totally, totally receptive to that. So uh, hopefully we'll see something like that with the finished rulebook version. As I think this is a game that you need to be able to sit down with your buddy, have your best buddy over, pour that whiskey, just open the box, learn it quickly, learn as you play. The first game will be a little messy. And then, you know, the next game you really start to roll into it. But this is definitely a game that you need to have a quick start. As of the going live of this video, which should be September 20th, I believe. There might be a linked version you can watch ahead of time. But as of September 20th, I believe that's Kickstarter Day, if you're watching this in the future. Um, then this will be live on Kickstarter. I'll put the link to it in the description below. At least I'm going to try to, and I'm going to try to put the link to the How to Play Solo if you would enjoy that for some practice on your own. As far as playtime, 15 minutes is what the box says. I would say probably 20 minutes, but not much more than that. Do I recommend this game? I don't do that. If you watch my channel, you know I don't do that. I just try to show you what the game is. For myself, Yes, this has a place on my two-player shelf, and I don't keep a lot of games there, but it does because, and again, if you watch anything of mine, I'm, I'm kind of stupid. I do a lot of very stupid things that I probably should regret and not do, and this is good stupid fun. It's so safe, and it's innocent. You could, you could play with your best buddy. You could play with your spouse, your friend, whatever. Whatever it is, you could do that if if you both can be kind of rambunctious and just have fun with it. 
you have to be a good sport. If you're not into the timed thing and the fun of kind of racing for that piece, it probably isn't for you because that really is the highlight. So rambunctious fun, beers with a buddy, you'd have a great time. I'm doing a giveaway of this copy, this review copy that was sent. I'm doing a giveaway over at my channel, so you're welcome. If you would like to try and win it, come on over, check it out, see if you get it. Also, be sure to give this video a like, ask any questions below, and before you go, one actually a really cool thing. Um, I do want you to know about this game to kind of summarize the personality. So my buddy, we were playing it, and he, he asked me, have you ever played Spoons? And I was like, I think I remember that. And so he kind of described what Spoons was. It's usually a bigger group game where something happens with cards, and whoever the first person, once you play all your cards, you grab a spoon, and once somebody grabs one spoon, then everyone else has to race and grab. And there's only enough spoons for uh, one person gets left out, right? So if you're the last to go for a spoon, then you're out of the game, right? And so it's got that playing cards, racing to grab something, right? And this is, you know, playing cards or building your fort and racing to grab the token. Well, here's the thing. I don't enjoy games like spoons. Um, those, they stress me out. They're overly social. I'm board games for one. I do like playing board games with other people, but that's way too social for me. So something I do like about this, the reason I can play this, and I don't necessarily want to play spoons, this is kind of intimate. It, like I said, it's a, it's a bonding experience. So like what, what I did is, is we went and we worked out and it was fun. And then we came back and we had some drinks and we played this and it was just a good time to kind of get to know each other like it's just fun so whoever your best friend is that's what makes this a little better maybe if you're not into a large loud group environment but you still kind of want the rambunctious feeling i do think this is pretty cool for it what do you think i love you all i'll see you next time